So recently I've been diving into Blender's expansive pool of add-ons and my god, there's so many hidden gems. And this one in particular actually fell right on my lap. The creator of the add-on itself messaged me and told me to review the add-on. And once I saw the name and I saw the actual add-on, I was like, brother, shoot that shit over because I need to check it out. And just to clarify, we're talking about Animation Layer 2.0. Now, if you used Maya before, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't and you haven't heard of this add-on, then don't worry, stick around and I'll show you. Now, there's always that one guy that comments down below and says, well, Blender can already do that. You need just to do spin around five times, click this, click that, do a backflip, smash the like button, and boom. We don't need this add-on. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. Now, if you want Blender to be adopted at a faster rate, if you want Blender to be an industry standard, it can't just do things. It needs to be intuitive to do things. It needs to be easy to do things. One click, two clicks away, not 10 clicks or like extremely complicated for no reason. And this add-on right here is an amazing step in that direction. Now, I've done some light testing. I haven't used this add-on extensively, but within minutes of opening, I could figure out how it works. Now, again, I don't know everything, but I could get it to work to do what I wanted it to do within minutes, and that's key. I can't say the same thing about the NLA editor, can you? So without further ado, here's animation layers for Blender. Now, of course, the first thing we gotta do is actually download the add-on. Now, heads up, the add-on is $28. I didn't mean to highlight that. The add-on is $28. So maybe what you can do is watch this video, see if it actually is something that you're willing to invest in. In my opinion, the software itself is free, Blender is free. And if you can download an add-on here and there to make your life a little bit easier, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. So anyways, as you guys can see, it already has uh, 1500 downloads and five stars. So people seem to love it. I'll have a link in the description for you guys to download this. But once you have it downloaded, let's open up Blender. All right, so once you have Blender open, you're gonna go to Edit, Preferences, and head over to Add-ons and press Install, and find wherever it is. For me, it's in the Downloads folder. And once you click on it, you press Install. So I'm just gonna type in Layers here, and make sure it's checked. And once it, once it is checked, go ahead and Save Preferences. Close this window, press N, open this up, and it should be an animation right there. So what you can do is turn on Animation Layers by checking that box. And now you pretty much have the add-on active. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. And what I'm going to do is press the add animation layer button right here. And instantly, instantly we have two different layers. We have the base layer, which is our animation. And for our animation here, we're using Max. Um, Max is gonna be one of the characters for the two animate course. So you guys can go check that out in the top Top, no, top, top right somewhere. You can't see my hand, but to the top right, there'll be a link to 2anime.ca. You can look up more information about our upcoming course. And also for this video, we're gonna be using this animation. And this is made by my lovely girlfriend. So we're gonna use this as an example for this video. So here we have our base layer, which is where the base animation is in. And then when we click on our anim layer, we don't have any keys down here in the bottom of the screen. And that's because we have no animation here. This is where we can add additional animation to the walk cycle that you guys saw. So let's first explore some of the options we see here. So a couple of things you guys will notice is what we pressed uh, originally, which is add animation layer. So with this, you can just add another layer. So you can add a breathing, animate that, cycle that, then add, I don't know, a head nod, or maybe you want the character to look left during the walk cycle and then look right. You, you don't have to touch your original animation. You can just make a new layer and have the character do that. And if you don't like it, you can just delete that layer and that animation is gone. So you don't mess up your original walk cycle. Now there's lots of uses for this, but that's just one of them. Okay, so down here we have influence. And I guess the best way to actually show you this is by giving you an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the cog, the center of gravity of the character. And again, we're in our new layer. We're not in the base layer. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I'm going to rotate it. And you know what, while we're at it, I'm gonna select these and rotate these all the way back. So we have our character doing this ridiculous, ridiculous thing. And what would be your expectation of what's gonna happen next? We just completely changed the character's pose. And this was a walk cycle. So let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. 
So, so the walk cycle continues and our character is just doing the Harlem shake while he's walking. So everything else is still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, all the rotations are still there, except we have the added rotations that we just made on this new layer. Now, of course, we can mute this layer. And so the character goes back to the base layer, um, the original walk cycle, unmute, back to this one. Uh, we can lock this. So that means we can't really touch it anymore. Let's say we put it on view. We can't really touch this animation anymore, even if we're on it. If you guys, you guys can see there's no uh, keys in the timeline. So you can't mess it up. And so we're going to unlock this. And there we go. Our key is right there. And um, the other thing we have is influence. So I can bring this influence down gradually. And so this it's just look at this. Look at this. We go from 100% influence to zero. And if you were to get some sort of notes on a shot and or on a cycle or something and you had to fix it, this would be the best way to do it. It's just ridiculously helpful. So if you guys pay attention to the right of the influence, this is where you can enable and disable setting heat. So right now this is enabled and it's not disabled. So we're gonna enable this. Uh, we're gonna start this off at 100% influence. We're gonna come to frame 100. And we're going to drag this all the way down to frame zero. I didn't have to set another key after I set one because this button was on. Now, what do we have? We go from 100% influence and the character slowly makes his way back up, which is pretty cool. And if you guys notice, this doesn't actually affect the rest of the cycle. So it's just in the initial stages of the cycle. So this is all pretty damn cool. Um, now you have the option to uh, obviously we're on add right now so we're adding this on top of the original base layer and we can also replace the base layer so this is i don't know when you would use this but um i would usually go with add but with replace we don't have the on all the keys that we actually set in the animation layer those keys are replacing the original keys on the base layer so in this beginning the cog is kind of staying still it's just a hip rotating because we're on replace instead of add now, if we go ahead and add, there we go. We have the original position of the cog, and this is just added to that animation. Lastly, it's subtract, which I guess it makes the reverse version of the original. I'm not sure. I don't know if I would ever use subtract, but I'm going to leave this on add. So let's say this is the final animation. This is what we wanted to use. And you want to bake this animation. So if you were to bake this with the NLA editor, what, would, what it would do is it would set keys on every single frame you have up until frame for me would be 414. But with this beautiful thing, if we go ahead and merge or bake, we have the option to smart bake and the direction, you can choose that. Let's say I want to bake down because there's nothing above it and we want to merge it. So let's go ahead and press OK and boom so one thing that happened here is that we didn't make the new layer that we had into a cycle and so everything on this base layer is a cycle and that's why the character is popping but if we had made it a cycle then this would be a perfect loop and it didn't set a key on every single frame on all 400 and whatever it set smart bake keys so all it really did was set keys on the controllers that we had selected and when it needed to set those keys. It didn't set the keys on every single frame. So a couple other options we have here is you have the option to duplicate the layers. You have the option to extract selected bones. And here we have select bones in layers. So if we make, again, if we make a new layer, let's say, and we want the head to be this way and we want the neck to come up. The only thing we have selected in this new animation layer, which you can rename, let's say, we call this Bob, I don't know. Um, so in Bob, the only things we have selected are the neck and head, but I don't know if I'll remember that. So you can come down here, scroll down, select bones in layer. So every single bone that you've touched in that new layer is automatically selected. That is pretty damn cool. And you know what? In fact, I'm going to say this is better than Maya's. So anyways, we have a few other options. We have the active actions. We have cyclic F curves. We have remove F curves. And again, this is me just lightly looking at this and trying this out once and instantly I knew how to use it to at least achieve what I wanted to achieve. 
So if you guys want to find out more information about the add-on, you can check out the link in the description. The creator has written out all the new features and all the old features and how to use them, so you guys can go check those out. And if you have an add-on of your own to share, you can drop it in the comment down below. So yeah, I think that concludes this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future animation videos, check out 2Animate if you're interested in a Blender animation course that's coming in this November. And with all that out of the way, happy animating, and I'll see you guys in the next video.